Hey guys, what's up today? Welcome to my channel, PSL with Dev. We have a brand new tutorial today. We have the onboarding pastel. Uh, let me just show you. Yep, this is on my screen. I will show you the briefcase uh, shortly. In this tutorial, we're gonna build a beautiful onboard page uh, for your introduction app. So if you are interested in Swift and Swift UI or iOS, develop iOS app development, you can feel free, you feel free to watch this video and hit the like button, hit the share button and subscribe my channel if you are interested in iOS app developments. Uh, I have upload, I will upload uh, weekly two or three videos uh, per week on my channel. So don't forget to miss that. And I will share the exclusive Swift UI techniques for you. So join my channel and subscribe my channel. Enough talking. Uh, let me just show you the project. And yep, you can see my awesome background. I, I love it. Team code. And then yep, here we are. And this is our onboarding channel. So here we have the skip button here, an image, the title and the description for uh, how many tabs you want to add. So welcome to our delivery services. So this is our first title, track your delivery in real time. And here it goes, this smooth and nice animation here and trans smooth and nice transition between the pages. And uh, here we have the buttons here to go for forward and back. And when I hit the skip button, it just show me the last page. So after that, you can call, uh, you can add a button to go to your home page, your main screen or whatever you want. So this is it. This is very practical uh, tutorial. You can use it in all in all your apps and change the uh these uh, iconic custom uh, onboarding uh page uh based on your context based on your needs and based on your apps so this is it so uh let me just uh, open my xcode and i hit command shift and n to create a new project here so here in my in my xcode I will choose the iOS and then the app. So here we have pastel onboarding and I just uh, get rid of the app. So make sure the interface is set to Swift UI and the language is set to Swift and the storage none. And we don't want to include any tests here. So uncheck that if it is checked. So next. Uh, you can define uh, the path you want to uh, save the project and let's hit the create button and let me just show you what's going on here. So today for this tutorial, for this app, we're going to use MVVM architecture based on stand for model for representing the data, view model, the bridge between model and view and a view to represent the UI. So here it goes and here. So first of all, uh, I want to uh, add my assets here. So I just copy and paste this. Let me just copy and paste this. So here it goes and I will go through it. So this back for the back here, onboarding one. Here it goes, this is onboarding one, onboarding two, and onboarding three, and the right arrow, this is here. So this is my assets. And don't worry about the assets and the code, I will put a link to my GitHub repository for this project in the description, so feel free to check the description. And also, if you have any opinion, if you have any suggestions, if you have any question about Swift and Swift UI or programming at all, uh, you can uh, write me in, write me down in the comment section. I will respond to it ASAP. So this is it. And first of all, I will uh, create a new group here. So uh, comment option and N naming model 
So here I uh, press command and N. So basically this is just a, this the shortcut of Xcode. You can uh, also create group by right click on the root and new group. And then if, uh, when you have the group, you can uh, create new file here. So uh, right click new file. So I just uh, prefer to use the shortcuts. So command and N. Yep, new Swift file and the name is going to onboarding page. So on boarding page here, that's Swift. Yep, and onboarding. Yep, let me just uh, correct that. I misspelled the onboarding. So. We import foundation first, then we have to create our model to represent each onboarding page. So for each onboarding page, we have uh, the title, a description and the image here. So here we have a struct onboarding page and here this is the identifiable. So when a strike confirms to identifiable, you have to uh, define an ID for it. So let's ID equal to UUID. And it generates a unique ID for each uh, instance of this strike. So after that, you have let's image name. So this is a string type. And let's title. Also a string and uh, with description description which is also a string. So this is our model here. So after that uh, the ID for the uh, uh, for each uh, one is unique. We have an English name, we have a title and we have a description. So we are going to go and we, I want to create a new group here. So comment option and N, this is named view model. And inside the view model, we have a view model here. So we have a new save file and here we have the onboarding, onboarding view model. So here it goes. We don't want to import foundation. We want the CFUI because we have some functionality like colors that does not include in uh, foundation. So we just import the CFUI and we have a class name onboarding new model. And this is confirmed to observable, observable object. So make sure that uh, confirms to uh, observable object because whenever the uh, view model and the logic behind the UI, our UI chain, uh, it uh, sent a message to the UI that the UI ha must be changed. So here it goes. We have uh, to define some uh, published properties to hold the onboarding data. So here, Published, published properties, properties to hold uh, onboarding data. So we have to define at published variable onboarding pages and this is uh, the type of an array of onboarding page onboarding page so this is it and let me just copy and paste these data here to just save the time so here it goes let me just clear this up so here we define at publish because whenever these data change, we gonna tell the UI that uh, change accordingly. So here it goes. We have three onboarding pages, as it like here. We have three of them. So the first one, the image name is onboarding one. 
the title we have the welcome to our delivery service new but a new online service and here the description the first onboarding page data the second one and the track is uh, all the same you can uh, change it based on your needs and based on your uh, context of apps so here it goes we have the first one and here we have to define colors for each onboarding page so here it goes so if you see right here we have a, a green and black background here and if i go to the next one we have a brighter green and the brightest so here it goes this is our uh, page color here before all that i want to create a new group here so comment option and n naming extension so in our extension we have a new swift file named color and for the color we have some colors here so we import swift ui and we have extension for color and then we define some colors here i just copy and paste this one to set the time basically just uh, the color you can also define uh, your own color so we have a background we have a text color we have greenish gray olive gray and shadow color so you can change it based on your needs so here in our view model so we have uh, published let me just see add publish variable of page color and this is an array of color so here it goes so for each page we have different uh opacity of uh, uh the background color so uh, we have three pages so we have to define uh, three colors so we have dot background dot opacity 0 0.33 then again we have dot background so basically uh we add the opacity to our background color so this is our background color without any uh, opacity or opacity one so we have three so one divided by three is equal to three three to 0 0.33 so here we have again that opacity 0 0.66 and then the last one we have background so here it goes this is our page colors and then we have to define uh, our properties to manage onboarding state so add published variable current or property sorry about that property current uh page index equal to and this is type of an integer and equal to zero here it goes and after that we have a uh, two function or three functions sorry about that for go to the next page go to the previous page and the escape function so uh function to navigate to the next page, next onboarding page don't forget to comment your code because this is the uh, cleanest way to write code and remember that you have to read more code than you write the code so don't forget to uh, uh, comment out your code and this is good uh, even for you and even for uh, the next uh, writer or next contributor to find out what 
the code uh, does actually. So func uh, we go to next page and here it goes. Here we have with animation with animation and here we have the current page index plus equal to one. So the problem is uh, if we do that, this is just simply uh, add one to current page. But the problem is if we had uh, we reached the last page and uh, we press this, uh, this also add uh add one to the current page so uh and the app crashes so we don't want that so we have to check here so if so current page index uh less than uh onboarding pages that count minus one and yep Uh, this checks uh, if it's less than uh, the uh, last page. So this is basically one to three and minus one, it is two. So in an array, we start from zero. So zero, one, two. And if this current page uh, less than two, we can add the one to current page index here. But if it's equal to true or greater than two, we don't want to add any uh, numbers to it. So here it goes. And here we have function to navigate to the previous pay, previous onboarding page here. So here we have funk, let me just go up and go to previous page. And here we have function. So again, uh, if this is uh, on zero, we don't want to, uh, we don't want to, uh, give it the overflow value so here we have to check so if current page let me just see current page index greater than zero then we have to with animation with animation and this is the current page index minus equal to one so this is it and here for the skip onboarding so here function to skip onboarding and proceed to the last page so here we have funk skip onboarding is a function so here in the curly braces so we have with animation and here we have the current page index equal to uh onboarding pages dot count minus one so this is it so basically it does go to the last page of the onboarding or you can uh, navigate to another page based on your needs in your app. I just go simply to the uh, end of the uh, pages here to focus on the functionality and make the things simple. So this is our view model. Uh, let me just go to the views and content view here. So here in our content view, we have at state, state at uh, state object. Yep, at state object variable view model equal to onboarding view model here. So this is it. 
and this is for the manage uh, view model to manage onboarding data onboarding data this is it so here we have a ZS stack for our background here so here we have color dot black dot ignore safe area here it goes and then we have to create a geometry and a path for creating this nice background here for uh, the line here and here it goes here we have geometry reader geometry reader and here we have proxy and and here it goes so path again path in and here so we have we want to move the path to the uh uh, CG point x0 and y0 and we have to draw in a line so path but at line again CG point CG point x would be a proxy that size that width multiplied by 0 0.65 and so the y would be zero. Again, we have a path, but add line to CG point. Uh, again, we have geometry. Uh, we have proxy dot size dot width multiplied by 0 0.35. And for the y, we have geometry. We have proxy, sorry about that, proxy that size that height so let me just add a fill to it so here we have dot fill and here we have view model dot page colors and here we pass the index of view model dot current page index to it and let me just uh, Close the parentheses. So here we have this uh, until now. So here we have to path dot add line to CG point X would be zero and divide with the proxy that size the height and this is X and we have to close it. So path dot close and after that we have dot ignore safe area here it goes we have it so after that we want to uh, create this beautiful rectangle here so in our extension before all that we have a new extension for our view so view and we import the saved UI and here it goes so let me just uh, copy and paste this one you can pause the video or uh, you can pause the video to see your code or type it or you can check my github repository in the description so basically apply corner radius to a specific corner of a view the parameters is radius and corners the corner radius to apply the corners to round so return a modified view with corner radius applied to a specific corner so yeah the corner radius here and we have we accept two things radius of type cg float and corners of ui rect corner and here modify content that modify uh, add a view modifier to it so modifier content and the content would be self and the modifier will be created shortly here and we have another 
extension for the views here. So apply a linear gradient background to a view. So parameters is colors, an array of color, object representing the gradient colors, start point. This is the starting point of the gradient defaults to the top here. And the end point defaults to the bottom here. So here we accept the color, an array of color. The start point, it is a type of a unit point, and this is the default dot top, and the end point again, this is the unit type, and this is dot bottom, and it returns some view, and the return, uh, this is the self dot background, and in the background, we have a linear gradient of the gradient of color. The start point would be the start point, and the end point would be the end point. So here it goes. So, head to the content view and we have we want to create the shape of our uh, custom uh, corner shape so here we have a striped so here we have corner radius shape and corner radius size are reused from your code. Here we have striped. So corner, first of all, corner radius shape. So this is the shape here. So there it goes, radius. Yep. So it returns a shape. So here we have variable of radius equal to cg float dot infinity then we have a variable of corner equal to a ui rect corner dot all corners for default and then we have a funk path in so path and we have let path equal to UI greater pass a path that consi consists of a straight and curved line segment that you can render in your custom view. So UI path, uh, UI bridge path, and we have to pass some things here. So here I think we want this. So rounded rig, we pass the rig here. By rounding corners, we pass the corners here. And corner ready, it is the CG size, and the width would be radius, and the height would be radius again. So this is our path, and here we have to return it. So return path dot CG path, and we want this is a path type. So path dot CG. So great. This is our radius shape, so we want to uh, pass this style here. So, strike corner radius style, and this is a view modifier. Here it goes we have a variable of radius of CG float, CG float variable of corners again ui rect corner and here we have the funk body and we have the content here that clip shape and for the clip shape we want to pass the shape out uh, we just built so corner radius shape and here for the radius we pass the radius and for the corners we pass the corners also this is it so this is our corner radius style and we use it right there so modify content content self and the modifier would be the corner radius style and we pass the style right there. so this is it after that, we want to create these, as I mentioned, these uh, uh, white rectangles. So here, 
Yeah, new struct. You can uh, share. Uh, sh uh, you can chunk this code as you want in uh, different files, but I prefer for this tutorial to uh, keep them in one file. So here we have rectangle, rectangle view, confirm to view type, and here it goes. <coughs> so we have a rectangle here. Let me just add it to here. So rectangle view. This is the white, a white, a white rectangle view here. So here uh, we have a rectangle. So here we have that corner radius that we just built. So the corner radius would be 100 and the corner would be an array and it's just the top right. So here it goes, we have the top right. After that, we have to corner radius that built in safety UI and this is a tree. And we have to frame it. So max height would be 350. And here we have a foreground style would be the white. Here it goes. We have this beautiful uh, rectangle here and we have a padding. And we have dot horizontal and 20. And then we have a frame and we want to pass max height dot infinity and alignment would be that button. So that align that button. Here it goes. After that, we want a VS stack in our uh, ZS stack here in our content view. So here we have VS stack. So here we have to create our skip button. So let me just create it. So new struct after the rectangle. So skip. Uh, let me just use mark to skip button is the button to skip onboarding this is it and let me just uh, for the rectangle view do the same so here again mark and we have a rectangle view here is a custom view for the white rectangle yep, that's it so here we have a strike skip button and confirm to view type and here it goes and let me just create a variable so we want to, uh, you can just leave it like, th like this, or you can add the variable of action. The type would be a function that returns void, that it does nothing here. So we have a button and we have the action of action. And here it goes. For our button, we have a rectangle. So let me just add it to our view here. So we have the skip button here. And for the action, we have to come to pass your model, not skip onboarding. So we have the rectangle and we have to frame it. So width would be 60 and height would be 25. And we have foreground style that white. Here it goes. Yep. And here we want to use our modifier. The corner corner radius would be 15, and again would be the top right. And again a corner radius for three. And 
and here we have an overlay to it. So here we have a text that said skip and the foreground style would be color. Let me just color that text color. Basically, this is the uh, text color that we defined here. So you can use any color you want, but I want this one. So the font would be that system size 12. And kerning would be 0 0.6. This is it. This is our skip button. So for the bottom, we have to frame it. So frame it. Max width would be that infinity and alignment would be that trailing. And we have to pad past the padding that horizontal and 30. And we have a bottom side that's plain here. Plain. Yep. Here it goes, we have it. So after that, in our VS stack. Let me just see what gonna do. We have onboarding page views. So here we have mark onboarding pages view is used to display display a collection of onboarding pages. Here it goes. And we have a struct here. So we pass this one here. So onboarding page view and confirm to view type. So before all that, we have to pass out observable object, observed, oh yep, observed object variable for view model to it so this is type of onboarding onboarding view model and here we have a tab view tab view and we have selection for the selection we have to pass dollar sign view model dot current page index and let me just get rid of the content here. I don't want that. And here we open the curly braces. Let me just add it to this one. So here we have the um, uh, onboarding pages view. And for the view model, we just pass the view model. Here it goes. So. For the tab view, we have to 4H, we have 4H loop for our data. So our data will be view model dot onboarding pages dot indices. And the ID would be self backslash dot self. And here we have index in we basically for each uh, for, uh, we have a for loop and iterate between the indexes. So we just pass the index here, and here we want to create our onboarding page view. So here we have mark. Let me just no. Uh, we have onboarding page view. This is a singular page onboarding yep. page view is used to uh, display in the visual. Let me express in the visual uh, onboarding pages. So here we have a struct naming onboarding page view and this is a view type here so uh we have a variable of left page this is the type of onboarding page 
and here it goes we have a real stack here and we have alignment alignment would be dot lane and we have a spacing of eight here so so let me just uh pass into this so onboarding page and for the page we have to pass view model uh view model dot onboarding pages and we pass the index to it here it goes and for the style we have some styling here so here for the tab we have the tab style tab view style and for the tab view style we have page tab view style and index display mode would be dot mirror this is it so here in our VS stack, we have to uh, pass the image, the title, and the description here. So here we have the image, and we pass the page that image name. Let me uh, just see. Yep, this is it. So this is a resizable, and we have to scale to fit, and we have to frame it. Max width would be dot infinity and max height would be 450 and the alignment would be dot trailing. So this is our image. Then we pass the title here. So we have a text. Hey, dot title. Yep. And we have the font dot system size would be 22 and we have that semi or font um, let me just see uh the weight that weight would be that semi bold and kerning would be 0 0.45 and the line spacing line spacing would be uh two and and half. This is it. After that, uh, we have a text and we want to pass the page dot description here. And here we have again font would be dot system size and the size would be 14 and kerning would be 0 0.28. And the foreground style would be color. Uh, sorry about that. Color. A text color. And dot line spacing would be five. Here it goes. This is it. So uh, as you can see, this is not uh, what we want. We want this one. We want this uh, aligned text, so we want to pass a padding here. So padding, here we have a padding of horizontal and we pass the 15. Let me see if that's good. So this is it. And here it goes. So here we have the uh, image, the title and the description here. And let me just see, we have another thing to add, I think. Yep, here, as you can see, between the title and the description, we have a line here, so we want to add it. So we have a rectangle. Dot foreground style would be that clear. And then we have to frame it with would be 50 and height would be 3 and we have a background so background and here we have to specify the color here so color red green and blue for red we pass 0 0.59 for the gray we pass 0 0.72 and for the blue we have passed 0 0.68 and yep we have to pass corner radius here too and we are good to go this is it as you can see it 
uh, the reason that we pass the color like this but don't specify the color in here because this is not a repetitive color that we want to use again so we just pass it like this uh, but if you want to pass uh, every color here as you can see we use the background here you have to pass every time this background here this is uh, not much cleaner or this is the hard code uh, this is the hard code yep that's it so we want to just add uh, the page indi indicator here and our buttons here so first of all we're gonna let me just use mark here mark mark That's it. So after that, we want to pass the page indicator. So in our uh, content view here, here we have a VS stack, and in our VS stack here we have HS stack. As you can see, we have the HS stack here. So let me just create the HS stack here. So we have HS stack here. So first of all, we have the custom. Uh, tab and indicator so let me just create this one here so here it goes you have mark column dash custom page indicator indicator and this is display display page indicators and here it is struct of custom page indicator. Confirm to view type and we're good to go. So uh, before we build this, we have two variables. So let page count. Uh, this is an integer type. So we can manually, it is. Uh, we can define it equal to three because we uh, we we are sure that we have three pages. But if you have uh, if you have dynamic uh, onboarding pages, or you can uh, if you want to add it in our view or change it lately later, you can just pass like this. So here we have uh, we don't you do you just want to don't specify the value and when you uh, want to use it. You can just specify the value. So for uh, for the uh, uh, reusable components, this is just like uh, this is better for that because you can re reuse it in uh, other uh, contexts you want in your app. So here it goes. Here we have another variable. So let current page index. This is an integer. So let me just comment it. Total number of onboarding pages. And you can also uh, pass whatever you want. So current, uh, current, current selected page index. So here it goes. And here we have HS stack and HS stack. So we have a spacing of eight. And here in curly braces, we have a 4H. So 4H. And here we have zero till uh, this is less than page count. And the ID would be backslash dot self and here we have indexing so here we have a circle so let me just add it to our hs tag here so here we have custom page indicator and page count would be view model dot uh onboarding pages uh, let me just if this is has minus one or not 
just count and this is the view model view model dot current page index yep that's it so here we have three uh uh circles so let me just so for our circle we have to pass some modifier here so that fail would be that clear then the frame with 15 and height 15 then we want to pass the uh, common linear gradient that our extension common linear gradient here that set uh, apply a linear gradient to background the view so here for the colors we have to pass an array so we, i pass the greenish gray and we pass the olive gray this is it and here we have to clip shape it the circle and we have the shadow and for the shadow we have the color so shadow color and radius would be zero uh, 7.5 i think yep and we have the y for it <clears throat> so this is it and we want just the uh gradient background for the active page so we, we want to check that so we just checked we want to check if the current page index equal to uh, index then we want to pass this one else yep here else we have just a circle that fill and for the fill we have gray color so color Red would be 0 0.85, green would be 0 0.85, and blue would be 0 0.85. So for the colors, uh, if you pass the same value to red, green, and blue, you just uh, create the different kind of the different shades of green. Uh, gray, but sorry about that. And here we have to frame these. So red 15 and height 15 also. Great. So after that, in our HS stack, we have to create two buttons and we are good to go. So in our custom and in the uh, content view, in our HS stack, we have a spacer to move things uh, on one side. So we have the one side. After that, we have to create two buttons i want the first one so i uh, just create the next page button so then we go, we head to the uh previous button so here uh, custom page indicator after that we have the mark column dash next page button is a button to navigate to the next page yep that's it so this is a struct next page button here this is confirmed to view and again we have uh, if you want to reuse it uh, you want to pass the variable of action type of avoid function that returns that not return anything so uh but if you want to just uh keep it right there you can just add uh, pass it to the uh button here so button here and for the action i just pass the action here and for the content here we have the rectangle so let me just add it to our edge side here. So we have a next page button and the action will be view model dot go to the next page. Here it goes. And here we have the rectangle dot fill 
again the detail clear and we have to frame it so the frame width 15 and height 15 and again a uh, common linear gradient and again the colors would be dark green greenish gray and that's olive green the corner radius would be 10 yep and again we pass our corner radius here to it so 25 and again we have that top right top right here and we have a shadow the color would be the shadow color and the radius would be z uh, 7.5 and again y would be 5. here it goes we don't have any errors good so we want just to add the corner radius to the top right so we pass the top right here here it goes and here we have the overlay to uh, show the image here so overlay and we have the image we pass the right let me just show the right image so here our right image dot right and this is a resizable and scale to fit and we have to frame it so frame width would be 80 and 18 and height would be 18 also so this is our next uh this is our next button yep good and uh, let me just create the previous page button so here we want to check uh, as you can see if we are in the first page we don't want to show the user to go to the previous page because it is not working so here it goes and also we can add another uh, check uh, or no we just leave it right there I just want to add another if to check if this is the uh, last page we can hide it but if you uh, if you want to go to the main screen you just want to uh, this button right here so here before the next page button we have the if view model that current page index greater than zero then we want to uh, pass the previous page button so uh here before the next page button we have a mark previous previous yep page button is a button to navigate to navigate uh to the pre previous page so here we have a struct and we have the previous previous page button and confirm to view type here and again we have on these uh, variable action here so variable action type of uh, function of the void so here we have a button that accept the action of the action here and for the content we have to pass the image and this is back that resizable that is able to fit and we have the width of 50 and height of as you can see we don't want to use the uh, corner radius on a rectangle here because our back image 
And this is also uh, done with that. So this is the shape uh, that we want to use. So here it goes, almost done. But as you can see, this is not uh, just uh, want, uh, I wanted. This is this nice uh, alignment here. So we want to add the padding here to it. And yep, here to our via stack here. We have to pass the padding. So padding. We have to pass edge inset. So for the top, we have the 40. For the leading, we have 50. For the bottom, we have 30. And again, for the trailing, we have 50. And I think we are good to go. Yep, that's it. So I think I missed something in our skip button let me just see what's going on here so yep I just want to uh, uh, I just uh, yep the problem is I set the padding to our real stack I just want to set the padding to our just like so I uh, press command and X and then I just copy it here so the variable are the same I just not at the right place so this is it we have it right there uh, let me just uh, run it on my simulator command and R here and Will succeed. So, in the meantime, if you are interested in this project, uh, in this kind of project, or if you are interested in Swift and Swift UR or iOS app development, make sure to subscribe my channel, Preset with Dev. I have a playlist for the Swift and Swift UI tutorial that uh, is a bunch of uh, there. I think there is uh, like 80 video right there. You can also check that. And uh, if you uh, enjoy this video, hit the like button, hit the share button, and share this video with your friends. Thank you so much. So uh, I just want to uh, I just wait for our app to run on the simulator. Is this running or not? Yep, I think it's running. Let me just pause it and then press a comment on R. Or maybe it is somewhere else. I have just two simulator here. So this is it. Let me just get rid of that. This is our app here. Beautiful and stunning onboarding view. We use uh, the tab, the custom modifier, view modifier, and uh, MVVM architecture to use this app. Hope you enjoy it and hope you learn a lot from it. So let me just check the functionality. Yep, this is good, but oh, uh, yep, I missed something here. So here we have, uh, we don't have the uh, previous uh, button here because we don't specify it right here with just an MTF. So here we have the previous previous page button and for the action I just pass the view model dot go to previous page. So this is it. I just uh, press command and R again and I think we are good to go. Yep, this is it. Here we have the back button right there. Nice and a smooth transition here. So this is not working. Yep. And good as good. So if I try to skip it, I just go to the next, uh, to the last page. So thanks for watching and make sure to subscribe my channel, like the video and share this video with your friends. 
and until the next one until the uh, and next cool safe and safe UI tutorial uh, bye bye stay safe and practice until you make it bye